Hello there. What we're going to be looking through today is a little review of the things that we went through in lesson 11, which was extracting chlorine, uh, in which we looked at the LeBlanc process. Uh, at the end of that session, what we did is I set some questions. So here are the answers to those questions. Okay, so first off, let's have a look. Let's remind ourselves uh, what those questions actually were. So we saw in the little blank process that lots of waste hydrogen chloride was produced. And what they did was chuck this down the drains, uh, which was not a great idea. Uh, but they kept doing that for a long time until in 1874, Henry Deacon found a way to oxidize the hydrogen chloride to make it into just chlorine gas which then could be used to do other things. The question takes that reaction and asks you to balance that equation. This is a relatively straightforward skill and more akin to what would be at GCSE than A-level, but it's always good to practice these skills. Question two is thinking about the green chemistry there, evaluating why was it better to turn that waste hydrogen chloride into chlorine than just chucking it away in the water. And the third questions, which some of you who I see in webinars, we discussed this a little bit then, and it was interesting seeing what you lot thought about this, um, suggest reasons why British Parliament was so slow to bring in laws uh, basically to protect the workers and those living nearby the factories. OK, so question one. Um, from the original format, I've made sure that I've changed the L's in the HCL to look much more like L's. In the original format, they sometimes looked a little bit like I's, which might make you think that I meant hydrogen, carbon, iodide, um, which as far as I'm aware, isn't actually a thing. And from the question, it does say hydrogen chloride. So logically speaking, it would make more sense for it to be HCl, but let's just exaggerate that L a little bit to make sure it's definitely clear that we mean chlorine or chloride. So there's the equation. We have got hydrogen chloride plus oxygen. And the word equation is actually given to you in the question. So arrow makes chlorine present as a gas and water present as steam, therefore present as a gas. So not only have I written out the equation there, I've also put in the state symbols. Again, this is really good practice to have a go at. Balancing it is pretty straightforward again. If you are still struggling at balancing, uh, please do check out my other videos on my channel. I've got quite a few on balancing, so please do check those out if you want a little bit of extra practice. So balancing this one, uh, I'm gonna first look at the oxygens. I've got two oxygens on the left-hand side, one oxygen on the right-hand side. Why am I start with oxygen? Because I felt like it, okay? You don't necessarily have to start with any particular element. Uh, so if I put a 2 in front of the H2O, that doubles the entire H2O molecule. So now I've got two oxygens on the right-hand side and two on the left. Great, they're balanced. However, I've also accidentally given myself two extra hydrogens. Therefore, I've got four hydrogens on that right-hand side there. Oof. Um, yeah. Here we go. Let's try and fix that by putting a four in front of the hydrogen chloride. So now I've got four lots of chlorine on the left and two lots on the right. But four lots of hydrogen in the left and four lots of hydrogen on the right. The only thing that didn't match was the chlorine. So just put the two in front of the chlorine. Boom, balanced. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, and just to back that up, just with sort of visual representation, I know some people find this very, very easy. Some people don't and like to have a little sketch of it. Uh, so if you are a very visual learner, there's a different representation that might help you with your balancing. OK, question two. Henry Gossage suggested uh, and implemented just putting water down the chimneys to wash the hydrogen chloride away in water. Um, it was a solution, but it certainly wasn't the best solution because what was happening is dissolving in water, yes, got rid of it, but it produced very dilute hydrochloric acid. And that hydrochloric acid, when it got into the waterways, was not good. 
Okay, it could react with the effluent solution. Um, it could pollute rivers. A lot of um, organisms that live in waterways are very, very sensitive to changes in pH, especially things like um, algae and the sort of smaller things, which the small things can have a big effect. Okay, so if the algae started dying off, we're affecting the whole food web in that ecosystem there. So it's not a great idea. So ecosystem damage uh, within the waterways themselves but then equally we've got the water cycle so with the water cycle when the water evaporates the hydrogen chloride will go with it because it's the hydrochloric acid there um, and that will end up falling as acid rain which we discussed acid rain in that lesson for those of you who i have on edmodo i did post up an article about acid rain it was a study um, that I, I mentioned in the previous lesson about the fact that acid rain is not localized okay so it doesn't necessarily stay in one area it can spread further afield so that's what happened if they just dissolved it in water however that's what gossage suggested or gossage as we discovered because apparently he's from burla marsh in lincolnshire not france get in there lincolnshire reference um but then what henry deacon came up with was significantly better because instead of it being a waste product it ended up being a useful product a co-product sometimes we call that okay when you get a product that's not necessarily what you intended but is still quite useful it is called a co-product the chlorine was a useful product that could be used for bleaching water treatment uh, and other reactions usually to do with medicines or cleaning question three now there's several different approaches to answering a question like this um you can get very worked up and very political or you can just make suggestions uh, when we were going through this in the webinar there were some hilarious suggestions from people who were getting uh, very passionate about these sorts of things and by hilarious i mean they made really good points um just potentially not in a very politically correct way um so there are several reasons why the British government at that time was quite slow to respond to this. Um, and a lot of it can be seen quite cynically, um, but there are realities to any implementation of new policies uh, as we are discovering at this very moment. So reason number one that I've gone for is first off, the industry itself was very profitable. Not only was it very profitable, but it created employment. OK, so it's making jobs. That is a good thing. It's making money that can be then invested back into the industry itself or into the country or into the local area. While some people might see this as a bit money hungry, um, there are real benefits to the people in society of the finances developed from this process. Not only that, the country, as in the United Kingdom and England, needed the alkalis. And so did other countries as well. So we could make a lot of money, uh, as we discussed in lesson, by exporting the alkalis to France because their alkalis were essential for their industrial revolution. Whenever new regulations come into effect, there is a heck of a lot of work that goes into that and time and money. OK, so any new legislation that was put in place to uh, to regulate the industry would have been quite expensive. So. They might have had to change lots of equipment. They might have had to have inspections. They've got all these extra things to do, which takes time and time is money. And unfortunately, at this point in history, um, the interests of the employers were seen to be much more important uh, than the interests of the workers. Again, looking at this from a very sceptical point of view, a very pessimistic point of view, um, you could say something along the lines of as long as the people at the top were getting paid, the people at the bottom didn't matter. Now, obviously, I'd like to think we all think that is not true at all. But unfortunately, this was a point of view that was prevalent at this time in history. OK, then, uh, that is it for today. That's all that we needed to do. That was just a very cheeky little review of the questions that we're at the end of that PowerPoint.